Welcome to another episode of Ask GMBM, where we've been going through all your comments and questions, so we can have a go at answering them. Try our best, at least. Yeah. Now, one of the questions we've got coming up is, should I sell my bike and get another one, or not sell it at all? Uh, right, let's start this off with uh, Jay Cam. It's actually helping me out from last week. We were talking about wheel sizes and how they're 650B is the same as 27.5, which is. So he's talking about a BSD, which is the bead seat diameter. So where the tire sits, that diameter. So 650B, 27.5, identical. 700C to 29 is the same as well. It's a BSD of 622 millimeters. We all knew that. Obviously. But the BSD does not consider the thickness of the tire. So when you put on a wider, larger volume tire, i.e. Mm. mountain bike tire on 29er, that makes it bigger. Mm wider and taller. So in practicality, if you've got a road wheel and a mountain bike wheel with yeah. a tire on it, they're gonna be different. Yeah, of course. <sighs> huh. There we go. Thanks. A proper answer. Thanks, <laughs> Jay Cam, for that one. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Javid Amin Sheikh. I hope Sheikh. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, Hi guys, I'm living in Singapore. Here, handlebar width max limit is 700 mil. I am thinking of buying Control Tech Terminator handlebar and extensions, which I can put on after reaching my local trail. Is it a good idea to use these extensions to increase my handlebar width? What do you think? Um, I've heard this before in yeah. Singapore that you can't run anything wider than 700 mil for riding yeah. around the city, I guess. Yeah. Um, extensions, I know people have used these. I've never tried them myself. So going back, 10 years when bars weren't that wide, people mm. invented these things, you just slide them in, so your grip sits on top of these. Okay. I think with lock-on grips, it's completely fine. Um, the only thing is, once you get there, you put these in, you've then got to slide your grips out yeah. and move your bars, your, sh your shifters, your levers. Mm. So it's a bit of a pain bit to of me. Faff. Doing that every time and then mm. taking them back off to ride back into the city. <laughs> My sort of inclination mm. would be just to put them on and run them wider anyway. And are you going to get caught? Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? They do extend the bars by 40 millimeters, those uh, okay. controlled ones. It's quite a lot. That is quite Go a lot. Go from 700 to 740. That's yeah. pretty reasonable, I would say. Mm. Right, next question comes from Parker Jones. Hey guys, love the videos. I'm looking at buying YT Capra, but I've noticed it doesn't have a water bottle mount. Mm. I've previously been riding with a pack and after riding packless once, I'm in love. Any solutions to carry water whilst on the uh, new bike? Now, I love riding without a pack. I don't really like having that weight on my body. I try yeah. and get it on my bike as much as possible. Um, so there are a number of things. There's certain like frame straps where if you've got a bottle and you've got the space on the frame, you can use a strap to wrap the bottle yeah, on Yeah, you there. see people with do underneath the bike, on the yeah. down tube, the bottle does get covered mm, in mud. Yeah. I've seen people with like running drinks packs, they're yeah. sort of slimmer, and you can yeah. slide them into one of those enduro style bib shorts where yeah. you've got a bit of a pocket. I actually really like using a bum bag. Uh, have you tried a bum bag recently? I haven't, no. It's like an 80s thing that was turned. Uh, it's really good. Obviously, you can you get them with bladders as well, yeah. uh, and it's much different to having a pack on okay. and potentially getting sweaty. So I, I would recommend that, to yeah, be honest. Give it a go. Uh, so next one is from Rigaman10. Can you explain to me what the difference differences with trail bikes, downhill bikes, endurance bikes, etc., and what they're meant for? Well, we get that question an awful lot, and we've done a video to try and help you out. So check it out. There's all sorts of disciplines now that fall under that mountain bike umbrella. So we thought it'd be a good time to explain all the different types of bikes and what their intended use is. Next one's from Christian Posovec. Has any of you ever tried down, uh, riding a downhill bike with Duratissima? Duratissima, I've heard of them. Duratissima brakes or Magura MT7s because I'm thinking about buying one of them or should I just stay with my Shimano Saints? Um, Shimano Saints are going to be good. Uh, make sure you stay on top of the maintenance to make sure they're still working. So bleed them, replace the pads. They'll be really powerful. I have tried the Magura MT7s. I've got them on one of my e-bikes and they're flipping powerful. Oh, yeah? Most powerful brakes I've ever tried. Um, so I could recommend those, but I'm sure the Saints are powerful as well. Mm. Uh, I know the Specialized team actually run the gears now, don't they? So I'm yeah, sure yeah. Bruni has them on his bike. Yeah, next question comes from Piotr, Piotr Dubicki. Um, I'm very tall, around six foot seven. Wow. And he likes to blast around trails, most of all jumps. Would going from 27.5 to 29 have a big effect on me since I'm so tall? And also which brands make the biggest bikes? This is really a question for Doddy, isn't it? Doddy's quite tall. He is. Uh, although I saw an interview recently with Steve, uh, Steve Pete 
talking oh, yeah. about 29ers, and he would have loved to have a 29er Daniel bike yeah, back bet. when he was racing. Mm. So I do think they're going to suit the bigger riders. Yeah. Um, so Santa Cruz do build a big V10, Newt Proof build a big, big mega. mega. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what type of bike. Well, for jumps, I think a Mega is going to suit you for that. So you can get a 20 on a Mega. That would be in XXL, I think. The one that dodges yeah. out. Massive. Mm. Uh, so next one's from Buck Rogers. How can I bring myself to sell one of my bikes, especially after just having finished and respay, respray and respect it? It's hard to put a price on something so personal. So this is getting into the how many bikes do you need? Should you just keep them? Do you need keep, to sell them? Why, why are you selling it? And well, if, well, we did a garage tour at my garage a little while ago, and people told me off for hoarding things. <laughs> and I definitely got to a point where I had too many bikes. I had like five or six mountain bikes, three motorbikes, and it just wasn't enough space. And that M plus yeah, one. Yeah, but your mountain bikes out of those five, did they all have a different kind of? They did. Purpose? True. But I got to the point where I just couldn't deal with everything. There, oh. There'd be two or three bikes that needed work, and it annoyed me enough that I just sort of started getting rid of them. But can you have too many bikes? Let us know in the comments down below. I'd love mm. to know if you think you can have too many bikes. I would say keep it, especially if you've just re-sprayed it. Yeah, and if you've respect it and you've clearly put some time into it, yeah. keep it. Right, next question is actually about concussions. So Smashy says, Neil, I know you've had multiple concussions in your career. Do you ever find yourself lacking in skills you might have previously had on a bike, such as balance and coordination? Um, or was that short-lived? I would say yes, a bit short-lived. I did have a bit of a thing with balance and memory. My memory's not that great. I've not had that many concussions. Uh, but it's a dangerous thing to deal with and mm. you should definitely sort of ease off the bike riding and yeah. anything where you can hit your head again soon after. Um, but I feel now that I've probably got over them, although how do I really know? I don't really know. Difficult. Is. Definitely, if you've had any head injuries, do take your time when it comes to getting back into mountain biking. Take it slow and yep. build yourself back up. Don't go straight back off the drops and jumps. There's like reaction tests. I think the rugby do it, maybe motocross as well, where you do right. like a baseline. So before the start of the year, you do a, a reactions test, and then after a concussion, you can do it again to see how much that's affected ah, you. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm, cool. Um, next one is from Matec Lukak. Hi guys, uh, is conventional chain is a conventional chain suitable for high pivot bikes, or do you need to join two chains together to be able to get the correct length? That's a very good question. I don't know the answer to this. Yes, mm. the chain must have to be longer. You can buy chains in certain amount of lengths. Yeah. I do know that. Whether they, they go long enough, I don't know. No. Um, so potentially you would have to put two chains together. Not ideal because I always think the more you split and join a chain, it's going to weaken it. Yeah. Bit. But yeah, I don't have Absolutely. a great answer, I'm afraid, but that's a very interesting question. But if you want to see how to replace your chain, check out this video. So here's three ways to rejoin your chain. Uh, tools for the job, you'll need a chain tool or a multi-tool that's got a chain tool on it, particularly one with a second set of jaws. You also need a bent spoke or a third hand tool. Now it's time for quick fire and to kick us off, we've got Travis and Tamara ask, Neil, what gear do you normally use whilst wheeling? Wheeling. 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 Must be wheeling. Um, something kind of in the middle of the block, I don't know exactly what gear. Mm. You want it fairly light so you can get the front wheel up, but if it's mm. too light, you're gonna run out of gas straight away. So somewhere in the middle. Brilliant. And Anero Festa, hi, I'm 15 years old and I would like to do enduro, but is it too late for starting? No way. No. I started racing when I was 15, and that's quite young, really. There's loads of people getting into it, even in their 40s and 50s and older now, no, totally. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Smashy says, how tall is Doddy? <laughs> Six foot five hundred. Like, what is he? Is he six five? Rings about six four, possibly. I want to say six four it's pretty five. Pretty tall. He is tall. Very, well, he's tall. very big bikes, as we've said already. Uh, Grady Baxter. Hey guys, I just wanted to know why there are exposed sections of gear cable. Would it not be better to have it all enclosed? Yes, I think so. Yeah. I used to do that on my Daniel bikes because it just stops dirt water. and stuff and last, grime getting in. Your gears are lighter for longer, but mm. bikes don't always have the relative sort of. They have stops sometimes. You have to put a bit of bare cable, but you don't have to use them. You can sort of zip tie your cable to the outside. Yep. Time for correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this is sent in via our amazing uploader. So if you've got anything, bikes for the bike vault, correct me if I'm wrong. Hacks and bodges get uploading them. Um, this one comes from someone with the username, ah well, let's run, who rides a Bird Aeris 150 bike. So let's check, 
make the video. When my dad and I were riding, we came across this drop off where I was a bit front heavy. Didn't feel that my weight was in the right okay. place. Yes, yeah, a little bit. Decent sized drop off, you know, three, four feet. Rocky run out. Mm. Yeah, a little bit of a front wheel land though. What do you reckon, Jess? Yeah, there wasn't really much of a compression or like a push out of the bike to, to really get it onto its back wheel enough. So you kind of just flopping down those rocks a bit. Yeah, so I was, I'm looking at that bit where you go just off, mm. the barrel's just about to come off and I would like to be a bit further back. So dropping your heels, sliding the bike forward, but also keep your head up. I always notice that you're sort of, you see your yeah. peak drop a little bit and that actually drops your chest. It makes quite a big difference to where your weight is on the bike, but not a bad effort at all. Mm. Like not very front heavy. Nice one. Uh, if you want to send us your correct if I'm wrong, use that uploader. We'll check them out and try and help you out. Yeah. And that's it for today's show. So if you want to see more, then click over here where you can have a look at 10 essential phone apps for mountain bikers. And if you want to get into racing, uh, then click over here for how to do your first race. Uh, as ever, leave your questions down below. Yep. We'll try and get back to you. Give us a thumbs up and hit that sub button if you haven't done already.